Hello and welcome to the Explain series with your host, Dr. Brett Palmer. And this week we'll be talking about uh, vaginismus. So uh, vaginismus is a condition uh, which um, means there is automatic clamping down of the vaginal muscles uh, that stops uh, penetration of the vagina. And this penetration can be uh, caused by the Tampax, um, uh, uh, fingers, uh, gynecological examination, or uh, through uh, sexual intercourse. And so this Clamping itself can actually cause uh, pain and can be a little bit uh, painful. A lot of the time, though, there's no pain uh, at all. But uh, vaginismus and uh, this painful uh, episode or pain during sex is called dyspyrunia. Uh, and uh, vaginismus and dyspyrunia is also grouped together and is uh, sometimes called GPPPD, which is genitopelvic penetration pain disorder. Um, uh, I'm not going to go on about GPPPD. Um, I'm going to actually split these two things up. And this week, we're just going to be talking about vaginismus. So uh, there are many uh, different uh, types of uh, vaginismus, if you like. Um, but uh, the the end shot is uh, the uh, there's a sort of like a natural uh, reflex response around the vagina and it causes the vagina masses to clamp down and uh, can cause them to be quite uh, uh, tight. Uh, and that means, as I said before, uh, gynecological examinations, tampon, surgeon or vaginal intercourse uh, can be uh, very, very um, uh, difficult and sometimes can make it impossible. Uh, if it is possible, it can sometimes be a little bit uh, painful and causes uh, anxiety uh, and for some women intercourse is just not possible which then puts a strain on the relationships. Um, uh, that doesn't mean women uh, are not sexually aroused, <clears throat> they can be very very sexually aroused and want to have sex, it's just for some bizarre reason this penetration thing has become a bit of a, uh, an issue and is uh, in, in, uh, stops uh, them uh, from doing what they want to do. Um, and this obviously uh, can put lots of strain uh, on the on the relationships and partners as well. The male partners or female partners uh, can feel puzzled and rejected because they don't understand uh, what's actually uh, happening. And single women may actually avoid dating altogether. So this is actually a very serious problem and it's never talked about. Uh, and so that's why I'm doing this episode to help uh, try and uh, highlight it as a bit of a, an, an issue. And so there are two major types of uh, vaginismus, primary uh, vaginismus, which um, uh, a, a woman's always had, and secondary vaginismus, which develops uh, after having normal uh, sexual uh, function. Um, vaginismus can also be uh, global, occurring with all types of penetration, or it can sometimes be situational and occurring at just very specific uh, times. For example, a woman may be very happy to use tampons, for example, but when it comes down to uh, a gynecological exam or having sexual intercourse, then the muscles uh, tense up. <clears throat> And there's also varying degrees of vaginismus. You may have mild uh, vaginismus, uh, and it's quite common actually uh, during the exam uh, that women do have mild uh, vaginismus when going through a gynecological exam, for example, a cervical smear. Um, whereas uh, when uh, they're with their partner, uh, they may not have it at all. Uh, for some women, they may have very mild uh, vaginismus um, with their uh, partner, but with a few relaxation techniques uh, can uh, quite uh, happily uh, have enjoyable sexual intercourse. In more severe cases, uh, penetration may be completely impossible and the legs uh, are closed to avoid penetration. And so it, it does very much depend on the degree of uh, vaginismus an individual uh, experiences. Now, the causes of vaginismus are very, very wide and varied. Um, it can be due to fear of pain, or a lack of knowledge, lack of sexual experience, which then feeds into performance anxiety. Uh, a lot of this could be down to a previous bad relationship or some other type of uh, abuse uh, that the individual suffered in the past. It could also be because the individual has had uh, or has been sexually assaulted or has had uh, some other form of unwanted uh, sexual experience. <clears throat> 
and uh, sometimes it can be physical so there's physical changes after birth or after the menopause or after surgery um, uh, but it could also be nothing to do with that it could be uh, a cultural uh, message uh, about uh, sex so uh, some cultures are more open and have a, what's called a sex positive attitude uh, other cultures have a very negative attitude towards for example sex before marriage and they overlay a lot of guilt uh, particularly on the women which uh, uh, the men don't seem to, to get uh, and then this guilt feeds into uh, sexual dysfunction. Uh, sometimes it could be just a, a physical uh, problem in terms of poor vaginal lubrication and that a, a little bit more play or actually introducing some lubricant uh, can make uh, the uh, vaginismus go away. Uh, but also uh, there's other things that can cause uh, a vaginismus and that they can be infections or other sexual, um, or other medical conditions and that's why it's always advisable to see a sexual health doctor. Uh, a lot of the time it's a combination of uh, factors involved. The important thing is, which I want to get out of here, so yes, if you're watching this, you, you may or your partner may have uh, vaginismus. Uh, there is nothing physically wrong with you. You are perfectly normal and everything is fine down below. Uh, what you are experiencing is nothing more than an over-tightening of the vaginal muscles. If you like, uh, it's, it's, uh, and, and all that is is a, a natural reflex, like blinking. Um, if you, uh, when you, when if you're with, if you have a male partner, for example, a male partner when their penis is fully erect will flex their penis. Now, uh, men can do this on purpose, just as much as the women can uh, sometimes tighten the vagina, uh, the muscles in their vagina on purpose. But a lot of the time, men will flex. Uh, automatically and they won't have, won't be able to stop it in much the same way women as well will have a natural reflex of vaginal muscles so all vaginismus is is an over exaggeration an oversensitive stimulated um, uh, vaginal muscles and for that we just need to learn how to retrain those muscles so they are stimulated as you want them to be stimulated but you are perfectly normal apart from that so what are the signs and symptoms? Well, <clears throat> the appearance of the vagina is completely normal. And uh, if you uh, do go and have uh, an examination from uh, a sexual health doctor, or it could be sometimes a family doctor or a gynecologist, uh, they um, may not be able to do a speculum examination, even if they use a small one. And they may just insert either one finger or two finger. Uh, from the examiner side of things, uh, when you put a finger into the vagina to do the internal examination, uh, you will feel a tightness around the finger and a pulsing around the finger as well. If you don't get that from one finger, the examiner may insert two fingers. Each step of the examination is with the woman's consent and it is done at the woman's speed. And so these examinations may take three or four times uh, as long, uh, depending on how quickly the woman wants to go through the examination. Um, and obviously the woman has um, uh, has always has the right to stop the examination, but it should be highlighted to her right from the start that the examination could be stopped at any time. And this empowers the woman that she's actually in charge of the examination, as she should be anyway. Um, and so uh, uh, for this quick slide, what does vaginismus look like? Well, the vagina is completely normal, so there's actually nothing to see. This is an, an internal um, overstimulation of the vaginal muscles at the entrance of the vagina. So how is it diagnosed? It's actually diagnosed through taking a good sexual history and the factors that are causing from it. And some medical um, uh, and some medical professionals who uh, are very trained, uh, they are sexual health doctors to deal with uh, vaginismus. Um, other uh, doctors uh, who may be very good at general medicine uh, may not be very good at uh, uh, dealing with uh, vaginismus. So you do need uh, a, a trained practitioner um, who is had who has some kind of experience with uh, vaginismus as well. And so, what are the treatments? Well. You can, this can all be completely treated and uh, lots of women go on to have normal, fully satisfying sexual relationships. And it's usually there's three main stages of treatment, psychosexual therapy, pelvic floor exercises, which are just basically Kegel exercises and vaginal dilators. Let's go on one by one. What is psychosexual therapy? Psychosexual therapy is effectively 
counselling and talking through um, uh, the problems uh, maybe in the past uh, or maybe current problems um, and uh, which is feeding into effectively anxiety um, and all these problems can be talked through uh, to talk about uh, uh, sex and uh, what is the your normal response cycle and try to talk about the, the general mechanics of vagismus as, as well as coping and treatment strategies and so psychosexual therapy uh, is a very important area the, the only thing I would say is I'm not a psychosexual therapist and there's lots of uh, YouTube videos about psycho psychosexual therapy on YouTube and uh, on the internet uh, it's very important uh, to go to a psychosexual therapist if you feel you want to go uh, also, uh, you may feel that you want to go with your partner. So it's quite very much then, is your partner interested in going to uh, psychosexual therapy as well? And that will, will depend if you have a supportive partner or an unsupportive partner. Um, so uh, the, it, it's a lot more complicated uh, than I uh, make it out to be. Uh, but if you are up for counselling and up for discussing your sexual health problems, uh, then obviously speak to your doctor, but also uh, consider speaking to a psychosexual therapist as well. Um, now, Kegel exercises are uh, a bunch of exercises that enable, enable you to control the pelvic uh, floor, or um, uh, obviously the vaginal muscles are part of that pelvic floor, and they're the similar muscles, so if you had to stop peeing halfway through, or peeing, uh, it's those muscles which you uh, tighten and loosen, tighten and loosen, and also uh, uh, the muscles that tighten and loosen where you're defecating. There are many other types of exercises uh, you can do, and you can, if you put on the internet, uh, Kegel exercises. I think there's also a few apps uh, that tell you about Kegel exercises as well, uh, and this uh, will help uh, get you more familiar uh, with um, the muscles that support uh, and go around the, uh, the vagina and the genital area. So the last treatment or the last area we need to talk about is vaginal dilators. Now, before we talk about vaginal dilators, a lot of women are not familiar with how the vagina looks like. And I, I know that seems a bit peculiar, but I would strongly suggest that you get a small mirror, you lay down in bed in a comfortable, uh, relaxed atmosphere, usually by yourself, um, and have a look at your vagina and explore your vagina uh, to see um, um, where all the uh, bits and bobs are of the vagina. And so you know where uh, the area of concern is. I say this is because a lot of women are not comfortable with touching their vagina. And if you're not comfortable touching your own uh, genitals, um, this may be part of the reason uh, why there's a bit of anxiety because it's an unknown area to you. So if you make it a known area to you, this may uh, help with getting more comfortable uh, with your genitals. So what are vaginal dilators? Well, vaginal dilators are a set of thin tubes uh, which are graduated in size and you start off with the smallest one and insert it uh, uh, very, very slowly uh, to a speed that is comfortable to you. Um, and then after a few uh, weeks, you then go up to a bigger size. And so you're retraining the vaginal muscles um, and doing it at a pace which is controlled and which, which you are comfortable. A lot of women hate vaginal dilators. A lot of psychosexual therapists hate vaginal dilators and so do a lot of doctors. Uh, they are useful if uh, the person is willing to use them, but a lot of people are not willing to use them. And so uh, if you are not willing to use them, then you can use fingers, um, but a lot of women don't like to use fingers either. Um, they may want to use their partner's penis, for example, in which case then, uh, the partner has to be on board with this and has to understand that uh, if you say stop or halt, you have to stop right away. But if you do use your partner's fingers or his penis, then you just tell him to put it in a couple of millimetres, hold it for a few, uh, uh, for a minute or two, and then just slowly ask him to insert a few more millimetres. And you carry on doing that. And over time, you eventually get to full penetration. 
doesn't work for everyone. A lot of men go soft after a, a one or two minutes of not being uh, uh, having useful penetration. And it's important uh, to realise that uh, if men aren't being continually stimulated, that they will actually go soft. Uh, and it's also important to realise as well, as I said previously, when uh, a penis is uh, part way into the vagina, it will naturally flex and a man won't actually be able to stop it. Uh, so it's important. So he can stop the pen depth of penetration, but he won't be able to necessarily stop the flexing, which would be uh, a feeling which you, which may surprise you, which may cause further contraction. I, I say all this because uh, a lot of men are not aware of the reactions their genitals do as well. And so your partner has to be very understanding and very, very supportive in order to do that. If you don't have a supportive partner, you may not want to necessarily uh, do this type of uh, treatment. And you may want to go back to using vaginal um, dilators or just use your fingers. So what is the prognosis? It's completely curable. And I would advise to, uh, to do the things that I've suggested, but it does take time. Um, and a lot, of thing, a lot of people think that just a, a week uh, or two weeks and then everything will be back to normal. It doesn't quite work like that. This takes actually quite a, a large number of uh, months. And on one or two uh, patients I had, uh, which was a very severe form, of uh, vaginismus, um, it actually took a couple of years. Um, and don't uh, dismiss the cultural attitudes as well. So some women feel pressurized into having sex before marriage, when deep down uh, they belong to a culture where actually you're not gonna get past the vaginismus until probably after marriage, because it's so deeply ingrained in their personal beliefs. So it's very important to be honest with yourself and to do what you feel is comfortable. Um, as well as um, uh, obviously having agreement uh, with uh, your partner about uh, your situation and where you, how you want to go forward as well. Okay, um, the reason why I talk about supportive partners is because of unsupported partner uh, can actually make vagismus much, much worse. And obviously if they're being unsupportive, then, well, that's a relationship issue you may want to talk about uh, with that individual at another time. So, uh, in conclusion, um, generally, uh, don't use, you know, remember to wash correctly, don't use soaps, uh, use emollients, remember to wash them off. If you are having an active uh, sex life, uh, even if it's only oral sex, uh, remember to get a, a sexual health screen as well. And uh, vagismus can destroy relationships, I've seen it destroy relationships, so you must see a doctor or a psychosexual therapist, uh, ideally both. Uh, they should be working in teams. They usually do in the UK, but I can't speak for the rest of the world. Uh, some countries, there's no such thing as a sexual health doctor. You have to speak to a urologist, a gynecologist, or a gender dermatologist. Uh, which either way, any one of those doctors should put you forward uh, towards a psychosexual therapist who's able to treat uh, vaginismus. Uh, here are some of the websites I've used. Um, so uh, ignore. Uh, 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 so uh, these are some of the websites I've used. Uh, so what is Vagismus is a very, very good uh, website. And there are many, many different types of uh, websites all across the world. Um, and so be wary of uh, websites that are trying to sell you something. Uh, no creams are going to make this go away. Uh, uh, you need to do the things which uh, we've uh, suggested and be careful of people trying to sell you something. Uh, I know even my YouTube channel, I, I spend a lot of my time trying to delete uh, comments by people trying to sell you things. Um, so please be uh, wary about any quick fixes out there. There, there are none with vagismus. It's all in the mind and you need time to process these changes in your body. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, please like, subscribe and share and have great sexual health and I'll see you in the next episode. Take care. Goodbye.